let us fight for our people and for the sanctuary. We're fighting for the hearts and minds of our people that do not yet know who they are. But we are their champions. We are their superheroes, so to speak. Believe that. We're serious. Ain't no laughter. We ain't got time for shucking and jiving. We got issues going on with the nation of Israel. Our young men are so starved for leaders. And a mother recognizes that we have no stars, that we have no leaders, that we have no superheroes. And because of that absence of an image, all kinds of uh, uh, psychological destruction has permeated the brains of our people. Be honest with you, pay attention. Sons, help God! Yeah. Us against the world, what we deserve. What against our soul, it's a God we serve. Yeah. Us against the world, us against the world. Working for that kingdom come, no time to observe. Us against the world, dragging rough we heard. Ain't no stopping this, 7,000 on reserve. Yeah. Us against the world, us against the world. Us against the world, us against the world. Us against the world, overcoming all the odds, we go for the justice. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ, Bless Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is, that's right. It is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I love to do before we read the letters and the donations to give our shout outs. I love to cover a brief but pertinent topic. Uh, today, I want to follow up with the men's conference that we recently had. As a matter of fact, it ended yesterday. Three days, uh, the final day dealt with, uh, we followed up with Patient Sage Radio with questions and answers. I know a lot of you had to get back because you had to go back to work. It's understandable. We were not able to get all of you to come down because of the restrictions due to COVID-19. Uh, as you know that if you travel to, uh, to the Georgia area and come back, especially in the Northeast areas, they put, um, put you under quarantine. So if you had to go to work, we understood and understand why you were not able to make it. So now, our annual men's conference was very, very good. I was pleased with what we had to work with. The results was very, very excellent. Uh talk about, I want to follow up with uh, the leadership uh, qualities that we were discussing. I did a class called The Four Carpenters and Five Levels of Discipleship. I wanted to go even deeper, but I know I had to give way to the deacons and captains, so I couldn't just hog all the time, although I, you know I want to. But I didn't do that thing, and I don't operate like that. Uh, I want to discuss in brief that there are good qualities and bad qualities in leadership. There are good and bad leadership qualities that I have seen, and I try, I'm trying my best to rectify the bad qualities, but you got to identify them first. You can have a Saul type leadership quality, or you can have a David type leadership quality. You could have a Moses type leadership quality, a Joshua type leadership quality, even Elisha and Elijah leadership qualities. And when you read the history, you can see where each of our forefathers, how they dealt with men around them, how they dealt with the nation of Israel. 
And this is what I try to get you all to make reference to and to see and to exemplify in the better qualities. The I want to open up with Saul. Saul, because uh, believe it or not, some of you, especially amongst the you young men, some of you may be finding yourself following a Saul leadership quality. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, watch this. Let's come on, come on, come on. Come along, come along. 1 Samuel chapter 18. And we are going to start. Where do I want to start? I want to start at verse 5. I'm going to read 5 through 9. Watch this. Now, everything I bring out, you, you, if it doesn't pertain to you, let it be like water off a duck's back. But when it comes to leadership qualities, whether good or bad, I want everyone to take note and do self-examination. So 1 Samuel chapter 18, let's start at verse 5. And David, and David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Hmm. That tells you some about David's qualities right there, his characteristics. So let's read on though. I want to, I'm really dealing with Saul at this moment. And it came to pass as it came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, talking about Goliath, that the women came out of all, all cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, meaning angry. And the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. Now that's some heavy stuff. So the initial thing that we first see and identify with Saul here in this chapter is the spirit of envy, the spirit of jealousy. Was David's mind to overthrow Saul? No, not at all. Notice what is said in verse five. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul sent him over the, over the men of war, and he was, he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. See that? So David behaved himself. He had no ill intent, no evil intent, but Saul eyed David. What does that mean in verse 9 when it says, and Saul eyed David from that day and forward? Let's go to Mark 7.22. Mark chapter 7 and verse 22. Here we go. It reads, this is, uh, you know what I'll do? I'll start up at 20. When Christ was talking about what's, what defiles a man. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defiles the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, Proceed evil thoughts. So now it's letting you know that the heart is really talking about the mind. And he said, that which cometh out of the, out of the man, that defileth him. Verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. Blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. The bottom of verse 22 says, an evil eye. That's what it means back in 1 Samuel 18, verse nine, when it says, and Saul eyed David from that day and forward. He, how did he eye David? With an evil eye. When you always, mm, this guy right here. Now, when you look at that, and let's look at Sirach 324, watch this. Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus 3.24. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Watch this. It reads, hmm, For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion hath overthrown their judgment. So an evil eye goes with that evil suspicion. You suspect someone of evil, but it may 
not truly be there at all, as is the case with Saul and David. Most High brings people into the body, into the congregation for the betterment of the nation. Now it's up to you camp leaders, it's up to you leaders over the camp to deal with them correctly, to deal with them right. Not to have a spirit of envy on you or a spirit of jealousy. No, 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 no. So when God brings men and women in with various uh, skills, various um, understandings of things that you don't know outside of the script, I'm not talking about the scripture, I'm not talking about other things they have to bring to the body. Your job is to see it, exhort it, and help it to be exemplified. Not come down on it, not quench it out of a spirit of jealousy like Saul did. David was there to uplift Saul. David was there to support Saul, help Saul for the betterment of the nation of Israel. But Saul was filled with jealousy. He was filled with envy, filled with hatred. In other words, hatred. And we should not be like that. When the Lord brings men and women into the body, and they have, whether it be resources, understandings, and learnings that you and I don't have, it's all to the glory of God. It's all to the glory and the gathering of the nation of Israel, the betterment. Okay, so I want you all to understand that Saul was dealing with the works of the flesh. That's what it is. Let me show you that in Galatians 5. Let me show you that Galatians 5. And what I'd like you all to do, especially you men, you leaders, I want you to look at the video that I did called The Four Stages of Disloyalty. The Four Stages of Disloyalty, wherein you can identify, without having an evil eye, identify characteristics on men and women who are becoming disgruntled and disloyal. Be mindful. So now Galatians 5. I'm going to start at verse 19 about the fruits of the flesh, the works of the flesh, I'm excuse, excuse me, the works of the flesh, which is what Saul was battling with. Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Understand that thing. So now, I want to take a brief look at verse 20. Now you see where it talks about hatred, variance, emulations, wrath strife, seditions, heresies. That verse right there, that verse right there, those are some qualities that should not be, in, actually, none of these things should be in none of us. We could also cover um, another healthy uh, leadership relationship was Elijah and Elisha, very healthy. Then you also had a Moses and Joshua. Now Moses has certain characteristics that I, that I love, that I admire. He, um, as you know, Joshua was a young man, very loyal to him in a righteous sense. I'm not talking about loyalty in terms of carnality, in terms of the flesh, in terms of sin. I'm talking about loyalty in, in the context of righteousness. Joshua, Elisha, those were men that had those qualities. David too. So, Moses' leadership qualities, he was loyal, and Moses, listen to what I'm about to say, Moses listened to counsel. And what I want you to see, and this is going to, this is going to help all you camp leaders, all you up-and-coming leaders, I want to go to Exodus 18. I'm not going to read all of it, because it's, it's, it's kind of long, but I'm going to, certain things I want to highlight. Exodus 18 Hmm. This is when all the people was coming up to counsel uh, with Moses. And Moses was dealing with all, you know, that was a, we were a nation at that time. And his father-in-law, Jethro, was saying, hey, this is not good what you do. Let's start from there, as a matter of fact. Hmm. Let's start from 17. 
And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away, but thou and this people that is with thee, both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my, unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Bef uh, be thou for the people to Godward that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. So notice this, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, he was not an Israelite, but Moses listened. As a leader, you have to have the quality of that type of characteristic where you're willing to listen. No man is an island. You don't know, no man knows everything. Look, even Solomon had a council of men that he listened to. A, the most high God, has a council of angels, believe it or not. But let's read on. Exodus 18, we're in verse uh, 20. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of, out of all the people able men. Watch this, such as fear God, men of truth, Hating covetousness. Wow. You see these three things? He said, able men, such as fear God. So that's a characteristic you must have. Men of truth. That's the second thing. You must be about God's truth. Number three, hating covetousness. Wow. Those three things must a leader have. It says, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Uh, I always tell you, it's foolish to go over your, in terms of ranking, it is stupid and foolish. Here you got a, a, a camp of, let's say 200 men, but the, but the right hand man is a captain of 10,000, but your camp only consists of 200 people. See, that's called flattering titles. We should not be like that, Israel. Do not be about flattering titles. You can read about that in, where is that at? Job 32, okay? Job 32, verse 21 and 22. So let's read on though, let's read on. Exodus 18, verse 20, I had an idiot that was with us. He wanted to be a, a high-ranking captain and he had no leadership qualities. He was always, uh, uh, contrary to the work of God. Thank God he's left. And I told him, you can be Grand Poobah. You can be a captain of one million. How do you feel? He said, I feel the same. I said, exactly. That's all about flattering title with you. All right. Back to Exodus 18. We're in verse 22. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, Moses. But every small matter they shall judge so shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou, if thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all his people shall also go to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel, and made them heads over the people, Rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons, the hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. That's some heavy stuff right there. So now watch this, watch this, watch this. Because I know, I know right now, some of you, the evil amongst you, I'm not talking about an IOIC. I'm talking about the listeners, the, the social media listeners. Yes, they're saying right now, that's Moses done. We don't get a no comment now. We don't get a Christ and we don't deal with rank. There's no such thing as ranking in the scripture. Listen, listen, listen. Watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The interview, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. So what were they doing? I want you all on your own time to read John 18, 31 and Acts 25, verse 10 and 11. We were not allowed to go to Rome 
with any of our arguments. It was food. My mom said, get out of here. If this be a, 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 a you want us to judge your, your uh, stripes of words and things like that, y'all deal with that. So the unjust is really talking about first and foremost is the scribes and the Pharisees. Okay, verse two. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? What was Paul basing this on? Exodus 18, what, we're in what we just finished reading. Know ye not that we shall judge angels, talking about leaders, how much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. That was Paul being sarcastic because the church of Corinth was, was supposed to set up a ranking system of leaders like we just read in Exodus 18. But And those that were in leadership seats was not doing their job. They were not judging nothing. So that's why Paul came back with this statement. Verse four, if then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. He said, put all those young men over the thing. You guys don't want to do it? Put those young brothers over it. They don't get the job done. Okay. So I took you here to show you that we always had a ranking system, a leadership uh, ranking system. Look at verse five. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goes to law with brother, meaning you was going to the Pharisees and the scribes, and that before the unbelievers. <laughs> so I showed you what Moses did. I showed you what Paul did here in 1 Corinthians 6, which also ties in, ties in with Titus, what Paul said to Titus, the epistle of Paul to Titus, chapter 1, verse 5. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, meaning lacking. And ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. That's the same thing we're doing here in IUIC. It's impossible for me to be in every city, every state, every country. So with the help of the deacons and the captains, elders, leaders are being set up in every city, every state. And it would behoove you to learn from leadership. Like I said, uh, brothers often call and ask me to mentor them. Uh, one or two, would, I would be able to do it. But when it comes, there's hundreds and thousands of you. There's no way I can do it. It's totally impossible. So the use of these videos are useful tools. The communications that you have with your local camp leader, the captains of the region and deacon of the region will definitely benefit you. Okay. And from the deacons, they have, they always have or I always have the ear and vice versa. So I want to show you Galatians 5 again. As leaders, we must operate in the fruit of the spirit, not in the works of the flesh, but in the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5 and verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Now, I always pause there at love because sometimes you will make the mistake and think love, this word love here, is talking about some emotional, sensual, hug me, feel me type of thing. It's not talking about that at all, at all, at all, at all, at all. For example, when you go to 2 John verse 6, it reads, and this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. So what is love? That we walk after his commandments. So that's the first fruit of the spirit you must have. Any preacher, any pastor, any, uh, 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 what else they got out there? A reverend who says not to keep the commandments, they are not men of God at all. Galatians 5.22 again, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Meaning, against those qualities, there's no law you can pull to condemn. Understand that. But opposed to the works of the flesh, there are laws you can pull to condemn the works of the flesh. 
but there is no law you can pull to condemn joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, love. It's a, there's no law you can pull to condemn such qualities. I hope you understand that. Now, back to the men's conference, back to the men's conference. Uh, there was a system set up. I had a young captain set it up called the KPI system, the key performance indicator. Uh, I heard it. I observed it. Many of you did as well during a conference. There are some flaws with it. I am revising it. Okay, so don't worry about the grading system. I'm revising that entire thing because the, the key performance indicator is to reflect Membership and growth opposed to statistics and percentages. I understand it. I see that. So I see a lot of good qualities in a lot of you men. And I am proud. And I am in a context of I love and, and I'm excited with the gifts that many of you have and are bringing to the table. They just need a few tweaking here and there and it will benefit the nation of Israel. Okay. So remember this, I know a lot of you, you have this question, what if I fail, what if I make a mistake? What if I fail, what if I make a mistake? Remember this, we never fail, but we always learn. Let every failure, as you see it in your mind, be a learning opportunity. And, and if, you, if you see anything that you call a failure, if you see it as a learning opportunity to do better, then that means you will never truly fail. And you will, as they say in the world, you will fail your way to success. Always remember that. And as you grow and encourage, exhort, enlighten, and teach on a local level, from that local level, you will be extended on a global letter. Understand that. And again, this is preparing us for what is to come. We have many IUIC camps that are in desperate need of leadership, meaning I need able men, men of truth, men who do not have the spirit of covetousness to be set over these congregations. Okay, so keep that in mind as you grow in this truth, Israel. Keep it in mind. There's no stagnate. There must and should never be stagnation. And as a matter of fact, you won't be stagnant. You'll be go. You'll be backsliding. You'll be going backwards in that case. You know that old expression, desperate times call for desperate me measures. Well, things are about to get very pivotal very soon. You see the current climate in today's society. I know a lot of the uh, IUIC camps, you have a lot of men, and what I want you to start doing or preparing to do is breaking down these camps by twos. I know in, it would, to be large in your, in your numbers was very... It helped you grow. It helped you. Uh, um, it helped you grow. It helped you. It helped strengthen your courage while you're out there on the street. I'll say this: that uh, remember, Christ sent the disciples out two by two. You can cover more grounds by twos, and when you cover your when you go out two by twos, because that's how IUIC got started. Two by two. That's how it went. Okay. Uh, what was I looking for? There's a scripture. I want you to see what it says in Romans. Is it chapter 16? Yes. Romans 16, 19. Actually, I'm going to read about 18. Uh, it says, For they that are such serve, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Men who have a characteristic like that, a personality like that, we are commanded to mark them because they are about a divisive spirit. They have a divisive mentality. And all they truly care about is their own belly. And when it says their own belly, it means they are selfish by nature. It's all about me, 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 and not the people at all. So we got to separate from men like that. So in our camps, now I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this. In our camps, what I want your camps to start to do, some of you already have done it. I want you to start breaking your camps down by two. That's right. I said it by two. 
two by two. You can cover more ground that way. I know, I know. Cover it by twos. Okay, if you're not able to do by twos right now, how about by fours? Do it by do it like that. Four or five. How about that? And then as we go on, let's work our way down to two. We can cover a lot more ground that way. And therein we can fulfill. Revelation 7, 9, about that great exceeding multitude. Because like I said during the conference, never be satisfied who's in your local congregation. That's nothing. That's a, that's a speck of sand. We got to cover the world, Israel. We must cover the world. And I can't do it by myself. I need the help of able men, men of truth, men without a spirit of covetousness. And that's what I'm praying for. Christ commands us to pray for laborers, for the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So you men out there, a lot of you sitting in your butts right now, not doing nothing. You better come join this truth. Come join this and help us. And for those of you, you may have jobs wherein you know you can't really do nothing right now, but you can financially support this truth. Help us push this truth. Help us get to places we've never gone before. Help us to... to to put uh, flyers, literature out. Okay, you can do that. So also now, Romans six nineteen. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf. But yet I have, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good, and simple concerning evil. You see what Paul says: Be wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. That's a better understanding, or I'll say it this way. That's the best precept for Matthew. Let me look, let me look. Ten sixteen. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Go back to Romans 16, 19, bottom part. Wise unto that which is good. Be wise like a serpent concerning what is good and simple concerning evil. That's what harmless as a dove means, simple concerning evil. Remember this, Israel, and I know a lot of you know it, but we have many oppositions in this world, Babylon the Great. We have many enemies. People don't want to see, like J. Edgar Hoover said, he said the worst thing to the United States of America is Negro unity. What he meant by that is the organization and resurrection of the 12 tribes of Israel. They don't want that thing. You see the Christian religions are totally against the truth of the Bible that we're the Israelites. The Muslims are truly against the truth that we're the Israelites of the Bible. Okay. You see the SPLC, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center. You have the ADL, Anti-Defamation League, against the truth, throwing out trigger words, hate in your windows regarding the resurrection of the 12 tribes of Israel. And I always say this, that freedom of religion, that freedom of speech does not apply to the 12 tribes of Israel. You could talk any garbage you want. White Jesus, Allah, uh, Buddha, you can say whatever, but the second you say I'm an Israelite, now it's hate speech. Now, oh, and that's the same thing that Haman did against our four parents back during the Persian captivity. I'm going to the, watch this. I'm going to the rest of Esther, the rest of the chapters of the book of Esther in the Apocrypha, uh, chapter 13, and I'm gonna start at verse three. I'm going to show you how um, things in society or things in this world replay itself. I'm going to show you how Amon, who was an Edomite, he's no different than the ADL, Anti-Defamation League. He's no different than the Southern Poverty, Law, Southern Poverty Law Center. He's no different than the Christian apologetics. He's no different than the Christians of today's society, of the Ku Klux Klan. Watch this. I'm going to start at verse 3. Now, when I asked my counselors how this might be, how this might be brought to pass, Amon, that excelled in wisdom among us and was approved for his constant goodwill and steadfast fidelity and had honor among the second place in the kingdom. So again, who am I relating Amon to? The ADL, the SPLC, the Christian apologetics. I'm comparing them to all white supremacist groups. Watch verse 4. 
Haman did what? Declared unto us that in all the nations throughout the world, there was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations and continually despised the commandments of kings so as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us cannot go forward. So just like then as is today, they're saying and have said that the Israelites are a malicious people. The Israelites are so evil, they are against all nations united. They are against the development of America. They don't want to assimilate, they want to separate. It's the same in your windows. They're a hate group. They are anti, they are, what is the word? Anti-Semitic, that's what they're racist. It's the same garbage replaying itself all over again. Now, verse five, seeing then we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men, deferring in the strange manners of their laws and evil affected to our state, working all the mischief they can that our kingdom may not be firmly established. You see that? So this is where the history of Purim came in. Because of wicked Amon, Israel was forced to gather and fast together, okay? So that we could be saved, so that we could be delivered from the hand of our enemies. It was true back then, it's going to be true today. And it's gonna come with our faith in the Lord, our black Messiah, whom the world calls Christ, okay? He's the savior. He's the king of kings and Lord of laws, Lord of laws. Lord of Lords. What the hell? So, <laughs> now, watch this. What happened during this time, remember also, as I've been bringing out in the past few uh, Shout Out Tuesday lessons, how during the time of the 1400s, during the time of the Inquisitions, they made it illegal for us to keep God's commandments. It was so evil to follow the moral laws of God. It was so evil to follow the civil laws of God. It was so evil to follow the dietary laws of God. It was so evil to follow the ceremonial laws of God, meaning following God's holidays. That was so evil. It happened back then, and guess what they're trying to do? They're trying to make it so today. Just watch these Christians, whether black or white, if they fall under the banner of the apologetics, they call themselves the urban apologetics. If they follow themselves after the Baptists, they are the Southern Baptists. Watch them. It's always a black group and a white group. It's really the white group and then a black group underneath them. That has always been that way. Evil Edomites followed by evil Negroes. So the evil is paramount even today. Back to Esther 13 and verse 6. Therefore have we commanded that all they that are signified in writing unto you by Amen, who is ordained over the affairs and is next unto us, shall all with their wives and children be utterly destroyed by the sword of their enemies without all mercy and pity. The 14th day of the 12th month, a dar of this present year. This was the formation of this when Perim was set up. That they who of old and now also are malicious, talking about the Israelites, may in one day with violence go into the grave and so ever hereafter um, cause our affairs to be well settled and without trouble. Now, we all know how that ended. It ended terribly for them. But just like then, such as it was during the time of the 1400s under Spain and Portugal, as it is about to happen again here, laws are being uh, written Executive orders are being established. For example, uh, President Trump uh, wrote an executive order that Judaism is now a race, not a, a religion. Trump signs executive order to define Judaism as a race ethnicity. President Trump signed an executive order on Wednesday to virtually define Judaism as a race or national origin, not just a religion under the Civil Rights Act. The big picture, the order is meant to address anti-Jewish bias in universities. It also expands, expands, expands acts of anti-Semitism to include anti-Israel statements. Both measures have been spearheaded by Kenneth Marcus, 
head of the Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights, the New York Times notes. You see this crap? What's the rest of this crap say? Marcus opened investigations into the University of Pennsylvania and Stanford University over alleged admissions biases against Jewish people. Jewish people. He also investigated and reopened cases at New York University. The University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and Rogers University dealing with anti-Israel sentiments in schools that allegedly created hostile environments for Jewish students. You know, I don't see nobody burning crosses on their lawn. I don't see them getting shot in the streets like we are. What the hell is this? Like, I didn't, I didn't know the president of the United States could create a race. But anyway, he made that into a race. Um, what they call anti-Semitic laws are being set up and established. What they call hate speech is being established. Anytime, listen to what I'm about to say. There's nobody talking about kill or murder, homosexual. No, nothing like that. The problem is this. Here's the problem. When we as a people who have been mentally and spiritually destroyed, when we come back to the truth that we're the Israelites and proclaim we're the Israelites and proclaim that crisis of our people looks like us, that's called and dubbed hate speech, anti-Semitic speech, and it's, that is just so, so evil. And I know a lot of you say, well, why can't all the Israelite camps come together? Why can't you all be one? Believe me, believe me, that shall come to pass under one man, one God, one Lord, that's Christ. Let me show you that in Isaiah 52. Now, don't misunderstand. Here at IUIC, we love all our brothers and sisters in all the various camps. Regardless of the slander they direct our way, regardless of that, we are commanded to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And we do teach and believe and enforce that thing. Isaiah 52 verse 8 reads this way. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. That's the prophecy. I believe that. I have faith in that. Now, I see many of the shortcomings of many of the camps. I know how to better organize them. But my speech does not have any say in the camp. Because many of you say, why don't you say something? Why don't you? And it's always you brothers and sisters who are on the outside, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram. You, you have the opinion that I have not spoken to many of the Israelite leaders. And I have done so. I have. I have. Or attempted to try. But when I met with opposition and slander, what, Israel, what else can I do? I, can, I have no choice but to wait for the Lord to return. That's it. And hope that their eyes can be opened. All right, because when this great evil, this great red dragon comes down on us, they're not just going to see one particular group or camp. They see us all the same. You're all Israelites. You all teach the one great black Messiah whom the world calls Christ, or as, or as they say, Yahweh Shai. Uh, they're going to come down on us all the same. Hate speech, anti-Semitic speech is all going to be the same. And there's nothing that can be done to undo it. All we can do is wait on our Savior, the Messiah. Even our brothers, listen to what I'm about to say, even our brothers of the nation of Islam, we love them too. They, they tend to mix Islam with the Bible teachings uh, of the laws that, and the truth that were the Israelites. You can't mix those two together. You cannot mix those two together. And that's the only issue that we see. But through it all, Israel, understand this. We're going to come together. We're going to come together as one at the end of this thing, at the end. As long as we have no hatred and animosity towards our brothers, our sisters, Israel, believe you me, it's going to be all right. All right. Now, let's get to the reading of the shout out, shall we? All praises to the Lord. Let's get down to that thing. All right. Let's get to these letters. The mail did come in. All praise to the Lord. The mail did come in. All right. This is from Ed and Diane. Please pray for us. Thanks. Now, I believe this is, I noticed a couple up in Canada, and definitely they're going to be, and they, you've already been on the prayer list, but I'm going to 
say some more special prayers for your praises. Uh, this one is from Jacqueline M. Uh, she wrote an envelope. <laughs> Proverbs 13, 13. Who, he who despises the word will be destroyed, but he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. That's right. Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor there is profit. Proverbs 13, 20. He who walks with the wise men will be wise. 2 Thessalonians 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. She wrote, etc. I need prayer under I need prayer under attack from adversary. I'll explain, please. And she left her phone number. I will make sure that I get your phone number to Deacon Asaph. All right. Don't fear. Do not fear. This one here is from. Now, how do you say this? I see Amber T. But the first one, Alam Abram. Something and Amber T. All right, I'm just going to read it. Shalom, Bishop. Most high in Christ. Bless. This letter is sent with prayers for you and your family, the deacons, captains, officers, and their families as well. This is a donation to support pushing the truth across the earth. Praise the Lord. It is amazing what IUIC is accomplishing as my wife and I were ignorant of this truth. And as a result of learning it, we are beginning to introduce this truth through IUIC classes and books to our grown children as well. Thank you for all that IUIC do, and please stay safe. Shalom. Is that a hum or a bomb? Ah! And Amber T. All oh, praises. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. This one is from Amina. All oh, praises, Sister Amina. Shalom, Bishop. Pray that all is well with you and your family and all of IUIC. I just want to give all praises to the Most High for IUIC and for blessing you with wisdom, knowledge, and the understanding of his word. Bishop, when IUIC was teaching in Atlanta during the Black Lives Matter protest, that was beautiful to see all the brothers united under one spirit. Keep up the good work, Bishop, and may the Most High keep his hedge of protection around you all. Shalom. All praises to the Lord. Now I'm going to go back to this one right here, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, I just, I do definitely pray that all is well, because as I'm going to the next letters, this one keeps standing out when you say you're under attack from your, from adversary. And I'm looking at the handwriting and I just pray that all is well. I've definitely, I gotta, I definitely, it's, it's, it's buzzing in my head now. All right, this one is from Brother Paul. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel, all praise to the Most High God and the Son, Jesus Christ, to open up the understanding of the Bible to you and to teach the history of our people. May the Lord continue, lead, uh, guide, and teach us. Re repent as God bless you and your repentance. God bless you and your family and IUSC and the church. Brother Paul, tribe of Benjamin, all praises. Thank you so much. This one is from Wendy W. Wendy W. Uh, Dear Bishop, greetings in the name of the Most High God. I found you on YouTube and listened to you. And every day, I am glad I finally find the truth. This donation is to help send out the truth. And thank you all in Jesus' name. Love you all. Shalom. All praises. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you so much. All right. This one is from... Oh, it says, Shalom Leadership. Let me show it up there. It says, I am Jesus Aguilar. I've been enjoying and learning from the videos IUIC provides, and I'm thankful to the Most High for the great leadership in IUIC. I know there's a camp in LA and Bakersfield, Cali, but at this moment, my means of transportation are not uh, reliable. I would like to join IUIC and be a part of the truth. Can you give your email and phone number. I'll make sure to get this to Deacon Asaph as well. All righty then. All right then. This one is from ah, Brother Yavin. Ben Israel. Yavin. All praises. All praises to the Lord. See, so you got your lying thing with the swords. All praises. Look at that. Look at that. Somebody look at that right there. All right. Shalom, Bishop. Most high Christ bless you and your family. I wanted to give you a heads up that my letters are getting to you slow because some of the post offices out here got hit hard with the Rona. Yes, I believe it. And I was advised all mail is being delayed. I just wanted to put that out there because I'm still sending my letters at the same speed on my end. 
Moving on, Bishop. I've been seeing a lot of destruction inside the home of our people. Yes, people are starting to lose people close to them because of COVID-19. Families have to engage each other more. I'm hearing about wives disrespecting their husbands and kids disrespecting their families. We cannot tell Esau what he needs to do to clean up his house without cleaning up our houses first. That's right. IUSC has been strong on that already, but this is stuff I'm witnessing personally. Maybe this disease was meant to test some of our households. You know what, Yavin? I said the same thing. After, after the men's conference on Sunday, after Patient Saints, many, me and some of the leadership were sitting down and I said, you know, COVID-19 is a, is, a, is a hurtful and destructive disease. I said, but like the scripture says in Romans 8, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those called according to his purpose. And I, as destructive as it is, I see the good that it does in the context, in the context that it it is forcing us to draw closer to closer to the Lord and one another and improve our health, our eating habits, and the way that we're living. And, and that's the good I can see out of it. All right. So now I want to get back to your letter. One brother I went to high school with reached out to me because he knows what I'm about now and he's asking questions. What I'm finding out, and as you already know this, only the Most High can wake people up. I'm trying to help, but I can't do anything if the Most High ain't ready to, for him to wake up. I have steered him to your videos, but he wants to watch the camp that preaches the flea doctrine with their heads covered and saying the name Ahaya. So I just keep him at arm's distance for now. We still got to love our brothers, still love our sisters. They still are our people. So I just keep him at arm's distance for now. I know you have dealt with many similar situations. Lastly, I wanted to give a shout out to Officer Samson out of the De Detroit camp. The brother is talented with the mic and all and the ballpoint, meaning the writing. Sometimes we have to tell people when they're good and doing good. Keep up the good fight. I'm staying low key, cool and flexing occasionally. Uh, hey, T uh, Frank, uh, K T ah! T J Franklin, T K Franklin. You know, I know that you know who you're talking about. All praise to the Lord. Stay Israel focused because it's nation time. Shalom, all praises to the Lord. All praise and shout out to uh, Officer Samson out in Detroit. All praises. All right. This is from Sister Yadida. Shalom, Bishop. It has been a while since my last letter, but now that I have the address again, I hope to write every week Lord's will. I will be sending a care box for my overseas family, so be looking for it. Bishop, I often think about the sister that lost her job because she had you on the show. So I have sent her a little something as well. I pray she has moved on to bigger and better things, as that is my prayer to her. I know the body has done what they can, and I hope this helps as well, being it has taken me this long to send it. Please let us know how she is doing. And I hope she holds no animosity, for the Most High has other plans for her. Also, I have enclosed arms, booster club funds, all praise to the Most High for all the faithful leadership he has blessed us with. Thank you for all your wonderful works and dedication. With much love and faith, Sister Yadida. All praise to Sister Yadida. I definitely, now, what I did, I do have the, where is it? I do have it. Now, I got to reach out to Captain Isaac and Captain Hoshea regarding her contact information. Now, you did send this. I do have it. Uh, make it out to the sister from IUIC or the body. Now, what I'll do is if they cannot get in contact with her, because I'm not sure if they still, if they were still in contact with her, what I will do, I do have a pre, I do, I did, let me cover this. I did mm, write this. Uh, anyway, this is, let me fold it this way. I did do a return, if that's, if we can't get in contact with her. Uh, I got you right there, and I will be forwarding this to you if we cannot uh, find or reach her. I'm not sure. I, I, I have Captain Isaac and Captain O'Shea deal with our contacts overseas. 
All right, so just keep that in mind and all praises to the Lord. So I do want to definitely thank you on her behalf and on behalf of IUIC. All praises to the Lord, all praises. So now, so uh, this is a shout out to Edward and Diane H. All praises to the Lord, all praises. This is a shout out to Wendy W. Wendy W., all praises. Thank you so much. Shout out to, oh, this is Network for Good. You know, I haven't looked into that, Network for Good. This one is a shout out to, this is a business. Uh, do I want to say the business name? Hmm. Carter. Carter C. I'll just say it that way. All praises. Uh, this shout out to Lawrence B. And J, Lawrence B. J. Thank you. That's Lawrence B. is the middle initial. J is the last initial. Pelalila I, thank you so much. All praises. Um, Gwen R, thank you so much. And all praises. Uh, Gwen R, again, all praises. Lorinda E, thank you so much. All praises to the Lord. Um, wow. This handwriting right here. Oh. Chris and Yvette K is the last initials. All praises. All <laughs> praises. This one is, I want to give a shout out to JV Tijmal. Thank you so much. All praises. This one is from Paul H. I think that's an H as the last name. Paul. Brother Paul. Thank you so much. Amina R. Thank you, Amina. Um, Alan and, oh, it's Alan. Alan and Amber T. Alan was the name. Let me see. Where was that at? That letter, the letter, the letter. Where was it? Yes, it was this letter, and I could not read the bottom first name. That is Alan. Okay, Alan and Am Amber. Thank you. Now I can see it. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. All right. I want to give a shout out to Jacqueline M. All praises, Jacqueline M. Dave and Katrina P, thank you so much. Little David, little David, thank you so much. Uh, Carlton K, all praises to the Lord. Sheila K and Jada R, thank you so much. Sherilyn, middle initial A, last initial L, thank you so much. Uh, shout out to Kenneth S, all praises Kenneth S and L Mosley. Thank you, L Mosley. And a shout out again to Network for Good. All praises, all praises to the Lord. Israel, you know how I love to say, stay healthy, stay faithful, stay focused. But most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ bless you all. Love you. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth